Hello and welcome back to another episode of Fully Booked, the Hidden Gems author podcast, in which Craig Touch, myself, Roland Hume, chat some interesting figures and leading lights of this crazy industry in of writing and self-publishing. And today we are delighted to have a returning guest, Mr. Dave Chesson, who you will know from Kindlepreneur, here to tell us all about the brand new updates to one of our favorite and most useful tools that we use as self-published authors. So Dave, how are you doing? It's so nice to have you back. Hey, it is really good to be back. Not going to lie, it has been a wild couple of weeks, and quite frankly, I am looking forward to a well-deserved uh, glass of whiskey later tonight. <laughs> Scotch or bourbon? I'm a bourbon guy, uh, living in Tennessee. So, Are you Absolutely a Scotch well. person? I'm Scottish, but I prefer bourbon because I'm a terrible Scotsman. No, wonderful, wonderful, <laughs> taste. wonderful taste. <laughs> and of course, we wouldn't be here without the man himself, Craig Touch, the owner and founder of Hidden Gems and an author himself. How are you doing today, Craig? Are you a Scotch or a bourbon man? Uh, I like uh, bourbon. I like um, Jack Daniels, actually. So that's that's the bourbon I usually drink. But <laughs> here in, in Canada, you know, we have a, a, probably some different options than you guys do. But that's usually one of my go-tos. Um, so, yeah, thanks for coming back on, Dave. We wanted to have you on because I know that uh, yesterday, as in, uh, well, this by the time people see this, it'll be a week old. But, uh, you know, July 8th, your, uh, your new version of uh, Publisher Rocket has dropped. And you have added some pretty big new things to it um so we wanted to have you on to talk all about those things so that our uh, listeners can get to know what those are and then you know we'll have links pointing to more information about all that and where they can get it but in general i figured instead of me trying to tell people what what's in there i'd rather get it from uh the creator himself so thanks for coming on and uh why don't you tell us about what's going on with rocket yeah, well, uh, the biggest thing that we just did was we released a brand new Amazon ads feature. Um, see, back in the day, uh, Publisher Rocket used to kind of focus on giving you lots of options of just phrases and terms that were out there. You had to do a lot of legwork to try to figure out what kind of phrases might fit your book, et cetera. Well, the thing about Amazon ads is over the past couple of years, Amazon ads has really shifted from either they used to focus more on, hey, give us more opportunities, give us lots of keywords, and we'll try to figure out where we can find people, to all of a sudden shifting to being like, no, we want things that are relevant. We want keywords that really fit. But here's the thing for authors. Sometimes the things that we know are relevant, Amazon might not know. And so you could choose things inside of your Amazon ads and put them in there, and Amazon be like, no, not gonna show it. No, no impressions. Oh, you want that? You're going to have to pay dollars. And so what's ended up happening is, is that our advertisements have been centered around this kind of cat and mouse game of like, okay, uh, here's a term I think is relevant. Do you think it's relevant? Amazon's like, no, but here's a term we think is relevant. And you're like, no. And so authors have been stuck in the middle and again, been fighting with these high, you know, low impressions, high costs and guessing and trying to tailor it. So what we did at, at Rocket was like, you know what? What if we had the user put information about their book into our system? And then our system went through Amazon and the history on Amazon and started to say, you know what, guys? Here's everything Amazon thinks about your book. Here are the keyword phrases that Amazon has ranked your book for. That means that they liked you. They put it there. They helped to drive sales for it in the past or right now. Here are all the things your competitors are doing. Here are the books that Amazon likens to your book. Here are the authors that they think are connected to you. And so all of a sudden, you as an author can now, what I kind of say is like put the Amazon goggles and look at your book through Amazon eyes. And then through that, you can start to say, okay, from these things that Amazon likes, I agree with this, this, and this. And you can now start to build what is not only relevant to you, but is also relevant to Amazon and create better ads. And so that's the big thing that we dramatically changed inside of this um, that has just been incredible. It's, it's again, helped authors to increase their, their impressions as well as lower their costs and at the same time, get to see what Amazon sees when looking at their book. You know, you mentioned something then that I uh, really excited me, which is the fact that Amazon might have all sorts of keywords about your book which aren't particularly relevant. But because you get to see them, you can pick the ones that are relevant 
And I think that's so important because that meets a reader's expectations. And I think Amazon sometimes will miscategorize your book, drive people there and then be like, this isn't anything to do with that particular keyword. So this way that gives you some ability to like cherry pick what's relevant. Yeah, absolutely. And then at the same time too, um, even if you're not doing Amazon ads, using this system is really cool because you can now start to see things about your book. So case in point, we had somebody who um, put their book through our system, okay? And all of a sudden, there were all of these, they were like a science fiction book, okay? But there was a lot of romance terms that were popping up and romance searches and romance authors. You know why? After the person came back, it's like, hey, what's your system doing? We're like, well, let's look into it. They had selected a category that was in the romance area. It was a romance like broad category, but it was science fiction down the line. And so because they did that, Amazon system was starting to incorporate more romance into it. And so all of a sudden they had sort of muddied the water in Amazon's eyes. And Amazon's like, well, I think this is a romance, but kind of not. Maybe it's a sci-fi. And so it's shooting, like it's doing a shotgun blast all over the place and nothing is tailored. And it was through our system that they saw that, wow. Why is Amazon doing? Oh, okay, I get it. I cross the streams. And when you do that, again, we always forget Amazon's not a human. They're not looking, they didn't read your book and say, oh, okay, well, I know what this book's about. Like, no, they're taking all this data and they're trying to figure out the best thing. And so for once, we we as authors can actually look at the stuff and start realizing why Amazon's doing what they're doing, why they see my book like this, why they're showing my book for these weird things when it shouldn't be there. It's really cool. And is this going to be a so game? So if you, <laughs> probably, yeah. I will, and it's it's opened up a floodgate of other things that we're going to do at Publisher Rocket as well. Uh, I sent out an email to the Rocket owners, and one thing I want everybody to know, um, Rocket owner or not, when people buy Publisher Rocket, they get it for life. Uh, that includes all of the updates, all the new features. Like I, I personally dislike buying a software, and then you know. Later on, they're like, hey, okay, we approved it, now pay us. Um, so if you're hearing this, know that what's coming out, uh, you'll be privy to, okay? Uh, one thing is we're doing a reverse ASIN thing, okay? What that means is that if you put in your book's ASIN number, our program will come back and tell you everywhere Amazon has ranked it on Amazon in the past. Over the past couple of years, like if they had you showing up for these terms, this is incredible for a couple of reasons. Number one is you can put your competitor in there and start learning how they did on Amazon. Where did they go? Okay. This isn't their seven Kindle keywords. It's not that the seven Kindle keyword boxes. This is what Amazon did with the book where it showed it. Okay. So you can start to see all the keyword phrases that your competitors rank for what you rank for. And again, you'll be surprised some of the stuff they'll put you in. Um, and so that's one of the features that's going to be coming out. Technically, you could take advantage of that right now with the Amazon ads feature because it sort of does that, but very soon it'll be very intentional with just this. And then another thing too, is that because we have an insanely large database of all of the top keyword phrases, um, out there, you know, on Amazon, as well as, you know, what's, what's opportunistic, um, we're going to be come out with a, what I call the keyword generator. OK, and what this will be is you put in information about your book and Rocket's going to tell you that here are the best. Here's the best way to fill your seven Kindle keyword boxes. Here are the phrases that we absolutely think that A are doing great. B really connect with your book, you know, and this is how you could you should construct your seven Kindle keyword boxes just like that. And now instead of authors having to search, click around, look, figure it out, you know, and, and kind of combine and read our system will auto generate for you, which I mean, that one. That one's so cool. <laughs> I'm so excited about it personally. So, yeah, that's fantastic. We have so many people that um, ask us about how, what to put in those boxes um, and, uh, you know, how to fill them. And, and sometimes, you know, they're just sort of randomly filling them up with things that might or not be, might or might not be relevant. So being, and, and often we'll, we'll tell them you use Publisher Rocket to try to figure that out and then, you know, fill those boxes. And so having it actually be able to, for you not to just have to sort of research, put in random things, see if that ranks, blah, 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 to actually just proactively say, here, fill them with this. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, it's like, uh, you know, the thing about it is, uh, as an author, first and foremost, I'm constantly looking at 
my own operations and kind of ask myself, my goodness, wouldn't it be nice if, and then when that happens, I'm like, great, hey, programming team, let's figure out how to do this, you know? How should we, like, I want to be able to do that. Like, the amount of brain calories I have to spend to come up with my seven boxes, it's like, I'm not gonna lie, it can be difficult. When you get it right, it's incredible. It's a, it's a major difference. As we're seeing with this Amazon ads feature, if you don't get those seven Kindle keyword boxes right, you could be throwing your book out to the wind and not giving it an opportunity. But when you do get it right, the Amazon algorithm is so much more in line. It knows what to do. It knows where to put your book. It sees it for what it really is. And now it knows who to serve the book to. Because let's face it, Amazon wants to make more money. That's how they operate, right? And when they are more familiar with your book and they know what to do with it, they will do more with it because they'll make more money. But when all of a sudden they're like, well, I think it's kind of a romance. Well, it sort of has an alien. I, hmm, I don't know. Throw it over here. I mean, that's literally what they're doing. And so, you know, I'm always trying to find ways to just simplify my operations, make my life easier as an author. I'm like, oh, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I always think of um, the people who, who the algorithm is almost like employees at Barnes and Noble. You know, you, they have to put the book somewhere. And then right. sometimes you think they don't know what to do. So they're like cramming it in some obscure shelf that no human being will ever visit. Exactly. Well, that's that's exactly it. it that's a great analogy because you're right. They may look at it and they may say, wait a second, this is a Wiccan book. Well, is that religious studies? Is that nonfiction? Is that fantasy? Uh, just put it on this table. You know, maybe yeah. you can see it. I don't know. And that that's a great analogy. You're absolutely right, Roland. So if you look at if you use Rocket and you see that it's um, you know you're being put into whatever categories for whatever reasons, uh, and then you want to use that to help your AMS to, to help your ads, right? So uh, you're seeing that you know it's it's putting you in the wrong things. Are you able to um, override those, or is it a matter of figuring out why they're they're wrong about where they're putting you and fixing those issues um, at the source? Yeah, so that's a really good question. One of the things that influences the uh, categories that Amazon puts you in is your keywords. Um, it's it's the first step, okay? So when you go to uh, publish your book on KDP, um, you're gonna select your categories based off of the strings they offer. It is very important that you make sure that you put in the type of keywords that really fit that category, okay? Uh, it is one of the features that we do have in Publisher Rocket that if you identify a category on Publisher Rocket, you can click a button and it actually gives you a list of all of the keywords that are really attached to that category. I, don't, I recommend to people that they should use the, probably the last two of the seven Kindle keyword boxes to put in phrases that are very specific to the categories they've chosen in those last two. That will help to solidify you being in the category you've selected. If you don't do that, what Amazon ends up doing is they'll look at your keywords, they'll look at your other metadata, which is all the information you input in KDP, and then they look at your category and they're and if they're like, nah, I don't think so, they're going to remove you from what you selected and put you into something they think you should be in. Okay. And so it's really important that you strengthen your argument by ensuring that you have, you know, these particular phrases in there that that solidify you. So that's the first part. The second part though is that if Amazon constantly sees that, let's say, and again, this is just gonna be a very broad example to, to illustrate the point, but let's say you chose alien invasion and uh, space marines, okay? But Amazon starts to see that you are um, selling well and are connected to books that are usually in a category of, we'll say, um, oh boy, I should have thought of a third sci-fi. What's a third sci-fi category? Um, we'll just call it alien uh, abduction. I just, yeah, I, I don't think yeah. <laughs> we'll call it alien abduction. If right. Amazon's seeing that your book is selling like the alien abduction ones, they'll just add you to it. Sometimes they won't take you away from the ones you chose. They'll just add another one. I've seen, even today, I still see people that are a part of eight, nine categories. And it's with the new system, not the old system. And that's because Amazon starts to see them doing well in these other categories. So they put them in the other categories. Again, Amazon's all about making more money. 
But sometimes they'll say, you know what, this category, this person selected, we aren't too sure about it. And also like, we don't see enough results that prove they should be here. And so they'll just remove you, okay, uh, from it. They might put you in a new one, they might not. And that's why you see a little wonkiness. You'll see people who either immediately upon publishing, uh, they'll get put into a category and two days later, they're gone. They're not in that category anymore. Or they may see that, wow, I'm now a part of six categories. And two of those six were ones I didn't choose, but those are the ones showing up on the Amazon sales page. So now that I've kind of illustrated the, the ways that Amazon kind of affects your categories, right? Whether it's again, sending, setting up your right keywords from the beginning, and then second, your, your history. This goes into answering your question, which is that um, I have seen that when you've influenced sales in a certain direction, that does affect your categories. So if you set up your Amazon, uh, your Amazon ads and you're directing them in a certain way, this is another way to either correct the issue of them putting you in something you shouldn't be, or at least bringing you into a category or a section of the bookstore, if you will, that you want to be. And so this is a really good opportunity to look at that and really start to kind of wedge your way back into the thing you want most. Yeah, that's brilliant. And one of the, I mean, one of the things that's so wild to me about Amazon ads is relevancy trumps like bid and everything else. So the more successful yeah. you are finding keywords to work for you, the more successful you are because you pay less for them. And it's like this, yeah, this is really exciting. Exactly. Amazon, you know, it's funny is when Amazon ads first came out, uh, Amazon's, there were two really big things that, that occur. Okay. First off was that Amazon systems were not that great. Okay. They hadn't figured out a lot of things. Okay. And the second thing was there weren't many people out there. Okay. Not as many as today. So now in terms of advertisers. So what we ended up finding out was, Hey, just give Amazon an opportunity to show your book. Right. And so therefore Amazon was making money and because people were at least putting their books somewhere. However, though, as two things happened, right? The systems got better. Their ability to read what books should be where and what, how, you know, how things are going improved. And then on the second hand, there's a heck of a lot more people advertising. Now, Amazon has more, more information and more opportunities to make sales themselves. So what do they want? They want to make sure that the sanctity of their store stays true. They do not want people going to hard science and finding romance books, right? They want to show good hard science books. They want to show hard science books that would really fit and get more clicks and make everybody more money. That's what they want. And that is all about relevancy. And if they don't get the relevancy right, they don't get the you know, no click happens, which means Amazon doesn't get paid and the author doesn't get paid. And on top of that, too, if you as a shopper keep going and searching for dog food and you keep finding things you don't want to see, you know, or you see products that don't pertain to it. And let's face it, there's so many opportunities for sponsored ads everywhere. It could ruin your experience and cause you to start going to Walmart or something like that. And Amazon doesn't want that to happen. Absolutely. So if you're trying to um, sort of, like you said, influence your sales to try to get you into those categories, how would you do that? Well, a lot of it is really kind of connectivity. Uh, so what I mean by that is that when you start to set up your Amazon ads, okay, like I said, there are certain keyword phrases that fit certain categories. You might want to look at those keyword phrases that fit inside the category you want to be a part of and advertise to the ones that you think are relevant, but are that because now all of a sudden your book starts showing that, hey, it, it, it does things when it shows up for this. And now you're proving the fact that you do belong in that category. So that's one step that I think is really important. The second thing is, is that the more you sell in a certain area, OK, let's say certain keyword phrases or next to certain books. You're also by section, right, which is that section on your Amazon sales page that lists all the other books that other people have bought that also bought you, right, the also by section. Um, that will start to populate with the right things as well. Not only does that help with sales because, hey, I'm a big shopper of this kind of sci-fi book, right? I've been picking on sci-fi too much. I like this kind of romance book. And I see that, oh, man, all these other people like these that I that I recognize. First off, that's going to help on your conversions. But the second thing is Amazon's going to start to put you 
with those books more. They're going to see that these books should be together, that these books should be next to each other. And now all of a sudden their algorithm or their Amazon goggles, right, are going to see your book as more of a romance of this type of romance than it is that, shall we say, guy noir, you know, or that mystery thriller or, you know, this other type of, of romance, right? And I think that's really important. If you truly are a Christian wholesome romance, you want to be traveling with the other Christian wholesome romance in the eyes of Amazon. But if you start to have things that are petering into, let's say, the hot and steamy, you're going to start to kind of mess up the system and all of a sudden things get wild. Uh, not in the fun way. No pun intended. Um, but I, like I said, you can start to direct and maybe refocus Amazon's uh, way of looking at your book by proactively making ads that drive to the things that you're connected to. That's yeah. really cool. That really seems to, to, to give authors the kind of uh, self-published authors, the kind of power once again, that you would not get if you work with the traditional publisher. And I, I'm so excited yeah. about how self-publishing has just transformed the industry. Publishers are really struggling and tools like this. I mean, it, do publishers actually reach out to you? Do you work with publishers directly? Oh, it... oh yeah. We we have, um, uh, I know for a fact, three out of the five big five use Publisher Rocket. Um, you know, we have um, an incredible amount of publishing companies from mid-tier to lower tier uh, using the system as well. Uh, I, I personally have coached um, and consulted a couple of the big five companies as well. The subsidiaries is probably the better way to put the big five because, you know, it's always there subsidiary um, that brings you in. Um, and and it's, you know, to kind of come back to your self-published component, component of it is that I'll tell you this, having sat in some of the meetings with the publishing companies, um, it's incredible to see how much their, their frame of mind has sh shifted. You know, from like six, seven years ago, self-publishing sort of was something that many of them kind of looked down on. Um, you yeah. know, they, they were given the Heisman or, you know, quote unquote, maybe stick their nose up in the air just just a little bit. And now what they're seeing is, is that they're seeing self-publishers as like, man, these got like, how did that guy do that? Hey, what did this person do? We should, we should write, we should sign that guy or a gal. Um, and it's because what they're seeing is self-published authors have a history. They have books with sales. They know how to market. They know how to do things. And so I'm seeing these publishing companies where they're looking at one, you know, author and they're like, okay, here's a really good book, but, you know, do they know how to market? Do they know how to, you know, do things? And then here's this person who already has a following and that has built their thing. Let's sign this person. And so it's been a really cool shift. Um, and I think a lot of that is because self-published authors have started to gain the kind of information and have access to things that publishers have almost always had. And it's giving us that ability to really rise up. And the one thing that the self-published authors have, which publishers don't, is a, is a deep understanding of what they're writing. And as you become yeah. successful, who your audience is. And I've always found with traditional publishers, there's like that divide. You sling it over to your editor and your editor just like does whatever publishers regularly do. Whereas, you know, the Brandon Sanderson's of this world and, and people like that, they really understand it and get it. And I think the wonderful thing about self-publishing, it has made the reading experience better for readers as well. It's not just authors Absolutely. who are doing better it's readers as well get more out of it and may, may i just say i love that you brought brandon sanderson up that's that guy's my favorite that is my favorite author right there just pure gold sorry just had to throw that in there no no i agree I've, I'm, oh. I'm in the middle of reading his his uh series now and uh, i'm i'm loving it so nice my my 13 year old daughter uh athena um just picked up her first brandon sanderson book and she's reading skyward and i get an update every day i go upstairs from my office she's like dad i'm on chapter 23. did you see her that so so and so did this oh okay are you liking it uh-huh which just you know melts my little dad heart so yeah for sure um okay so i i mean this this stuff is obviously like we said game changing it's going to give people a uh, really good view into what's going on with their books um they the others uh, so rocket i mean obviously rocket does a whole bunch of other things too and, and you mentioned some of the stuff that is um also that you're working on that's coming out soon so what are some of the i get you know just for anybody who's listening who hasn't 
maybe even used Rocket before, what are some of the other key things that it can do for uh, for self publishers or well, yeah. for real publishers too? But <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, so we have I really like to break up the features into what it is you need. Um, so we have what's called the keyword feature, which is an easy way for you to see what phrases people are typing into Amazon and how many people are searching a month for that, how much money books are making that show up for that uh, competition. So all of a sudden you now can start, instead of just guessing a phrase or word for your seven Kindle keyword blocks, you can actually start to see which ones would actually benefit your book and you know start to fill it in with confidence. The second feature is the competition analyzer. And what this does is you can start to look at the books that show up for certain keyword phrases and see, hey, what book is this? Uh, who wrote it? How strong and good is it? You know, what are the reviews and how much money are they making? Um, this is this can be really eye opening uh, for people because all of a sudden they can start to see how well other authors are doing or how well they aren't doing. Um, the third feature is the category feature. And you know, Amazon has almost 14,000 individual books and ebook categories on their system. And we as authors get to select a couple when we go to publish. But there's a lot of interesting information about those categories. For example, um, you know, one category might only require five sales in order to be a best-selling author on it, whereas this another one might require 400. And so what we do is we actually list all those categories and we tell you how many sales that day you need to make in order to be a bestseller. But the other thing is, and this is something crazy that I still think is, is horrible that Amazon doesn't tell people this, is that there are uh, ghost categories and there are duplicate categories. So the ghost category is probably the most um, important for authors to understand because one fourth of every category is literally a ghost category. And what that is, is a category that technically doesn't exist. It is a place where you can go to the page on Amazon and it might show it, but you can always tell it's a, cate a ghost category because it doesn't have a name at the top, it has a number. And that's the first indication, okay? Um, if you are in a ghost category, no matter how well you sell or how great you do, you cannot be a bestseller for that ghost category. Doesn't, doesn't matter, it just doesn't exist. The second thing is that um, if you are in a ghost category, people can't find it. Shoppers cannot find that category on Amazon.com. There is no clicking to get there. You just have to know the sub URL and put it in there. So authors that don't understand about ghost categories, if you select like, and you make your your categories all ghosts, like you're kind of like you kind of shot yourself in the foot, and then you started a marathon. It's I don't. I believe that Amazon created ghost categories uh, for one reason, laziness. Um, there's been a lot of clamor and requests and requirements for certain categories to be added over time. And instead of Amazon having to do the hard work of reorganizing the sitemap to create them, they just create a ghost. And there it is. Okay, you can select it and that's it. Um, I'm not, I don't wanna push politics in any way, but it's very interesting to note that certain political uh, categories and maybe uh, political um, ideologies happen to be predominantly ghost. So I don't know if that's also something that they're doing, but it's very interesting. Um, so that's ghost category. So I tell authors, make sure that you're not in a ghost category. And as it stands right now, the only way to figure out what is and isn't a ghost category is you either have to know how to do the coding and check all the URLs, or if you have Rocket, it literally tags every ghost and it you know, gives you a warning. Just don't use this one. Isn't um, that fascinating? Oh my god! Yeah. I, I was I, just thinking, thinking of the polit the political books. I mean, not being a one side or the other. It is interesting how you can see book sales in general get uh, manipulated to make you know uh, certain books bestsellers when perhaps they weren't. And then, isn't this interesting that it's a way to like silently um, uh, shadow ban them, kind of thing? And, and I, I'm again saying that's my personal belief based off of looking at the data. Um, so I'm not saying that Amazon did that um, or anything like that. Uh, what I'm saying is it's very interesting when you see what is ghost. Um, there are certain ones, there's a lot of, a lot in different categories. So, you know, there's a lot of romance, there's a lot in, you know, others. But it is interesting when you see a cluster of information 
uh, that makes that leads one to infer that maybe there was a little bit of a decision matrix in there. That's all I'm going to say in that respect. Again, I'm just saying it was an opinion based off of looking at the data. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because I thought that the ghost categories were sort of like older categories that um, sort of got, uh, you know, replaced with newer ones. I didn't even think you could still select them. Um, oh, yeah. The fact that you can still select them is really bad. Well, but I didn't realize it was like newer ones too. So the old ones are retired categories and those those are absolutely true. Um, and you can't find those. Rocket doesn't have the retired ones on there. And for those of you who don't know, the retired ones, uh, like Craig said, would be ones where it is just a pure number. That's usually an indication of retirement, um, but they're they're like gone, gone. These are ones where you, it's absolutely listed when you go to publish your book on KDP um, and that you, you would think it is. And by the way, when you're on KDP and you select one of those, they still have a link for you to click, but you're gonna notice it looks different than the non uh, ghost ones, the, the real ones. And you'll find out that that ghost one is not on the left sidebar for you to click around and find out because there isn't one. So um, again, one fourth of all the categories on Amazon are ghosts. So key thing is make sure you don't have, you didn't select one. Now duplicates are different. Uh, a lot of, there are, you may find that there's a category you select and that category is duplicated on other main categories and other sections. You may select a duplicate and find out that you're now a part of six others just because you selected the one. Now, the cool thing about duplicates is Amazon will let you know when it's a duplicate. And they'll only let you know because if you select one, they'll automatically gray out the other duplicates so you don't select it. The thing is, is that authors still don't know this because you have to go to another main category in order to see some of the duplicates. So I usually recommend to people that if you're selecting a category, it's really good to select a duplicate so long as the other duplicates still fit your book. And you want to be sure of that because you don't want to get put into a category that's like, whoa, 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 that's not right. Okay, so if you go to select a duplicate, and by the way, Rocket lists every duplicate. And if you hover over the duplicate tag, it will tell you all the categories that's a part of it. And if you can look at that list and say, yeah, I, I agree with all these, then awesome. You just got five for the price of one do it so i like duplicates so long as they all fit and if they don't don't touch it so one of the like i said coming back to it our category feature um lists every category tells you how many sales you need to make to be a number one bestseller and it tells you if it's a duplicate or a ghost um and then finally too if you click on that category on insights it has a trend graph that tells you how that category is doing sales anything that's really important for an author to know that's about to get into that category so it's really cool. It gives you historical information about the category as a whole. Um, and then finally, we talked about the Amazon ads feature. Um, you know, and so those those are our four main features um, and how authors use them. That's, That's awesome. I mean, yeah. And then oh, and then so you also have now uh, you've updated. I think your uh, your course, your your Amazon ads course, right? Yeah. So what's what? Tell us about that. Then. Yeah, so a long time ago when I was trying to write an article on Kindlepreneur about doing Amazon ads, I realized, oh my goodness, you can't you can't write an article to do this. This would be terrible. So then I was like, okay, well then I just wanted to show people how to do ads. And so I built, you know, years ago, I built an a free video Amazon ads course. Uh, I left no stone unturned, you know, but a lot of that was centered on the old strategy. And a lot of it was centered on the old style dashboard and some of the capabilities we had. Well, with the creation of this new Amazon ads feature in Rocket, I redid the entire course from the ground up. We're talking about over two and a half hours of professionally done video um, teachings. And this will show you everything you need to know about what Amazon ads are, uh, how Amazon works with them, how to set up your first campaign, how to find the right keywords and things to target and how to manage. I mean, the whole kit and caboodle across the board. And again, like I said, it's 100% free. There's no gotcha moment. There's no, hey, you took my free course, now pay me for the, you know, the expensive course. There's no, uh, you don't even have to have Rocket to be able to use what you've learned from this. That's how cool this is. Um, and so you guys can absolutely access that. And one really awesome thing that I'm jazzed about was I was able to convince um, Janet Margot to partner up with me and create this course. And for those of you who don't know, 
Janet's an insider. She used to work for Amazon and helped to build the Amazon ads system. So we finally get to hear not only what I'm seeing from the data, but also with somebody who's worked inside the data as well as created the data, um, just giving you a full free lesson across the board on Amazon ads. Um, and if anybody's interested in signing up for that, um, you know, make sure to have the link in the show notes um, if that's good with you guys. But yeah, yeah just we'll like, and enjoy. We'll have a link down below. And I'm excited about. I've heard one of her courses before with someone else, and I re it was a it was a game changer for me because she came in and it's almost like every single thing that every single person had been saying about how to do Amazon ads was wrong. Yeah. And it's like she came in with an insider perspective and we're like, oh, I see now. And it's, yeah, she brought a real voice of authority. So to be able to give that course away for free is incredible. And I think every single person who is interested in, in dipping their toe in advertising on Amazon should definitely check that out. And they can do so in the link down below. We'll, I'm pointing down below. Absolutely. And yeah, it's, it's, um, and it's not just kind of theoretical either too. We start to really go in and build campaigns. And so you can see kind of the way that we approach advertisement and use the new strategies of today. So no stone unturned. And then it says, so I was just looking at the page and it says it's a five day course. So how does that work? Is it just um, like, yeah, you so run it? all in one day if you wanted <laughs> oh actually you can do it you can all uh you get lifetime access to it what we do is we actually send kind of a, a breakdown each day on kind of the sections um it's sort of a way to kind of help people along also too we have notes and quizzes people can take to make sure that they understood things um because some people don't like uh you know video and by the way we do have access to the notes so that you can read through those or if you wanted to print them off you can but yeah, it's you get access to it for life. We just kind of send some information over the first five days. That way to make that, you know, as they used to say, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah, so so that course is, um, is all about, uh, you know, Amazon advertising and it's, um, and I guess you use your tool uh, to show how you can use it. But like you said, you don't need the tool. You could use it without, if you, you know, if you know your keywords, you know your categories, you don't necessarily need Rocket. This will still take you through how to set up your campaigns, how to do all that stuff so that you can run your ads. And I mean, that's that's half the battle, right? Everybody's always, the most, uh, the most we get contacted for in terms of call, consult is for, you know, setting up ad accounts, whether it's Facebook or Amazon, um, and helping people get through all that and, and make the sales and, and know how to, you know, to target everything properly, right? So having a course like this lets you sort of learn that on your own um, without having to, you know, pay somebody to, to take you through it. And I think that's, I mean, that's a huge, huge battle because that is one of the hardest things. So as writers, you know, as self-publishers, we, we're writers, but we're also expected to be marketers and uh, editors and, and cover designers. And, you know, so we end up hiring out all these things, but it can get expensive. And what you can learn to do yourself, everybody has different skill sets, right? So some people are, they're good with, um, with graphics. So they do their own covers. That's great. Most people shouldn't be editing their own work. So you hire out an editor. Um, but you know, some people uh, are comfortable with the marketing if they understand how to how to use it, whereas others might still want to hire somebody else to do it, and that's fine, right? But for the people that really do want to save some money and not have to pay everybody for every little thing they do other than write the, their book, it, it really helps to have free information out there that lets them learn it themselves. So yeah, I'll also say too, if somebody is of the mind of, well, I still want to hire somebody to do this for me. I 100% recommend taking the course because then you better understand what the agency is doing or what the person is doing when they're building your, your ads. You'll understand sort of the process that they go through, why they're asking the questions that they're going to ask, what they're doing when they go to maintain or update or monitor. Here are the things that are going through their mind. I think this gives authors a lot more uh, conviction. Uh, better understanding, and therefore, um, I think that they have a higher chance of success with an agency, um, as well as if they do it their own. And the reason why I say that they would do better with an agency is because I've seen a lot of authors that come in with, uh, you know, 
misconceptions about the process and what it looks like. And so they may demand that on the first day they see a profit hit, you know, and they don't understand that the system, you know, when these people are setting up ads, that it needs a little bit of time to understand and they're trying to learn and they're building. And as they build the first campaigns, how they start to carve out and make it more and more, you know, uh, tailored and correct and therefore relevant and thus profitable. And so you as an author, whether you decide to do it your own, which I 100% recommend taking the course for sure for that. But even if you're like, I want to pay somebody to go do it, just being more knowledgeable about that makes you not only a better client, but it makes your campaigns that higher chance of success. So and yeah, and there's that hybrid like a partner who knows what they're doing. Well, yeah, exactly. Oh, but absolutely. there's also there's also that hybrid approach where it's like you can let somebody uh, set up your campaigns and get them all running smoothly. But, it, and then if you have that knowledge already, you can take them over and not have to be paying that person in perpetuity while your book is going, you can, you can take it over. They've, they've got done all the hard part of getting it all done, tweaking everything. And now you know enough to keep it running, make changes as needed and maybe learning from it so that for the next book, you'll be able to do it yourself or feel more comfortable at least. Yeah, absolutely. And that's one of the one of the cool things about this new Amazon ads feature on Publisher Rocket is that when you enter the information about your book, what's really awesome is it saves that information on Rocket so you can reopen the campaign. And what we do is we actually update the information over time. So let's say on Monday you go in there and you create your first campaign. You've developed all your keywords in your campaigns. You know, you watch that Amazon ads course, and you know what to do. And then on Thursday, you come back to Rocket, you can find more phrases and more things to be able to use when you want to either A, create more campaigns or B, start to add to previous campaigns and so forth. So the tool is always going to be there to generate the latest that Amazon's showing, the latest that Amazon's doing uh, so that you can constantly go in and continue to monitor and improve your campaigns as well. So it's not even a one and done kind of thing. It's an ongoing thing that's showing the health and the look of your book through Amazon's eyes. Yeah. That's so um, one final one final question because i know we're running out of time that i think is important i think when craig and i work with uh with authors one of the things that we find challenging uh challenges them is something you just mentioned like advertising is not a zero-sum game you don't start advertising and pay 50 dollars and get 75 dollars back in royalties your first day you can lose a lot of money building things up to, to the point where you are profitable but after that it's all gravy but also one of the things I think that we find challenging is we'll work with authors who who want to start advertising their book. They're really proud of their book, but their book isn't necessarily ready for gate for, for prime time. Like maybe they actually need to look at it and, and figure out a better cover, a better blurb, uh, things like that. You, I know you do a lot of guidance and support with Kindlepreneur. I mean, are these things that you talk to, to uh, customers about? Oh yeah, actually I have two lessons in that free course that cover exactly that. So one of the lessons actually goes through some of the things that authors can do to get more out of the ads. Um, you know, some of the things that make it where your ROI is even better and here's things that you should think about doing. The other uh, lesson is, um, actually it's one of the best lessons. It's also one of the biggest gut punches, which is what do you do when your ads are failing? And there's actually this really awesome step-by-step -step process that helps you identify where the problem is. You see, Amazon is a market that has a hungry buying market ready to buy books. The Amazon ads gives you an ability to get in front of those people. So when you see that there are you know, tens of thousands of people seeing your book, but only a tiny, tiny percentage are even engaging with your book, or there's a bunch of people clicking on your book and then not buying your book. You can start to use this information to identify where the problem is so that you can fix it. And therefore, not only are your ads going to be better, but your organic sales and your email and your marketing efforts will be even better. And so we really go into detail on, on both sides of that coin um, and helping people to get even more out of the ads, not just the initial sale, but more sales, not just the first sale, but also how to improve sales on all of your marketing across the board. That's great. And I think that's really, really useful because that's of one of the biggest challenges I think authors have to, to overcome. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's funny as a, a great example of this is that um, 
it was there was a book and i'm not going to use its title because i don't have permission to use it it was somebody that I, we did a little bit of private consulting on um just because of the situation and it was crazy the person did their ads and they were having like incredibly low conversion rates right and so when we looked at it we saw that hey you're clearly getting the book put next to the books that it should be um however though uh your click rates are horrible and this told us that there was something on what we call the search results page this means that this particular book when people saw it in the search results they were not engaging with it so after we realized that there were that this was where the problem lied we went to look at it from the perspective of the shopper and uh, this is not to be mean but i immediately when i went there and i saw i knew what the problem was the person had chosen a typewriter on the cover of the book and the typewriter was a very retro style typewriter however though the way that the typewriter was designed it looked like a toilet seat <laughs> no joke it looked like a toilet seat that had like little bumpy keys right where the feet go right and, and the reason for it was when the book is the right size, you know it's a retro style typewriter, okay? But when you shrink it down to the size on Amazon, all of a sudden it looks like a toilet. And so when people were scrolling through, nobody's going to it like, and this was on a subject matter that was in the writing realm, okay? That's, I'll leave it at that. Clearly the toilet seat was not. And I, I kind of at first thought maybe that would be a shock and awe, like, wait, what's the toilet doing here? But I think what's happened in Amazon is people are kind of used to a rando product showing up from time to time. <laughs> yeah. And just disregarding it real quick. And so this did not work for them. So that person changed the cover to include something that was clearly not a toilet seat. And immediately we saw that the conversion rates improved dramatically. Like, I mean, it was like night and day. Uh, we did the same thing too with a book blur we had someone where people were searching on amazon and then they would click and they would go over and the, the but the conversion rate to buy was horrible and so we did we changed the book description the book blurb and it was an immediate improvement um because and the reason for their book by the way their book blurb it was a book report it gave every detail of every character and it rolled through it we're like no this is not a move this is not a um a movie trailer make it a movie trailer make it exciting you know and so we did and immediately all the things work so i say all that because it's incredible uh the insight that you can get from ads alone to kind of figure out where you could put your attention to so that it affects all of your marketing and not just your ads yeah and i think that's so important and ads in some ways you lose money when you start advertising but you're not really losing money you're just paying money for information you're getting yeah. something back Rather than royalties and that is i know that so many of my books have been transformed by the feedback i got once i just threw them in front of enough people so that's a that's a big part of it absolutely so it looks like we're coming to the top of the hour um before we wrap things up craig do you have any final questions for, for dave uh no no final questions i just you know like i really appreciate you taking the time i know you're really really busy with the launch of this it just came out yesterday again the new version so uh i know that um you have a million things going on so we appreciate you coming on and, and sharing all this information with us so that um we can have every all of our listeners understand what they get out of rocket what they'll get out of your free course if they sign up for that um and you know just have an idea in general about you know the things that are important uh in terms of advertising their book the categories the keywords the uh, watching out for ghost categories all those different things uh is like they're super super important and that's the kind of thing that authors really really need to know about so thanks for coming on and sharing it with us absolutely well again guys thank you so much for having me well before we go two questions first of all what's your favorite hockey team oh uh the boston bruins Oof, i should say that it meant to be the new jersey devils but <laughs> and yeah. second question obviously we'll put a link down below um for uh that free course that you mentioned but where can people go to find out more about the brand new updated uh publisher rocket more about kindlepreneur uh, more about what you do yeah well um i've got a youtube channel where i've been walking through a lot of the scenarios and everything like that so if you just go to uh, youtube typing kindlepreneur that's great otherwise though if there's any questions that people had based off of what we talked about um you know a head scratcher or whatever if you go to kindlepreneur.com all the way to the bottom there's a link that says contact me 
hit me up, ask the question, more than happy to answer. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, Dave, thank you. It has been an absolute pleasure having you back. And hopefully it's it's not for the last time. Definitely scroll down there and check out that link to that free course because it is worth every penny. Wait, hang on. Um, but uh, you can click right through and go to the course there. But also while you're down there, don't be a stranger. We've got a big comment box. So make sure you leave Dave a nice comment uh, thanking him for all of the information that he shared with us today. There's also a like button. You can give that a double tap if you want. And if you haven't already, a subscribe button. Hit that. And we'll be back next week with another episode of Fully Booked. So until then, cheerio.